hey guys welcome back to my channel thank you so so much for clicking on this video in this video i'm going to show you how to make a full circle crop top and i'm going to be using this beautiful fabric for this tutorial yeah i have 1.5 meters of fabric and i've gone ahead and folded my fabric into two equal halves so what I'm going to do next is to turn this into a cone. So I'm going to grab the folded part and then I'm going to join it to the edge of the open part. Just the way I'm doing it here. So I folded my fabric into a cone like this. So this is what you should have for yours as well. So now I have my fabric folded in four in form of a cone shape all right because we'll cut both the front and the back together so i'm going to mark my shoulder measurement on the cone side like so my shoulder measurement divided by two is 14 inches and then i minus one inch from that measurement and i marked six inches on the shoulder line because this is going to be a sleeveless top so you don't want the sleeve to be too big so you are going to note that we are going to be marking our armhole on the open side of the fabric, not the closed side. So my armhole is 8 inches, so I'm just going to mark that downwards like so. So what I marked is my shoulder line, my armhole line, and my bust line. Those are the measurements you are seeing there. So after that, I'm going to mark my neck circumference, the neck width. And the neck depth so I use a neck width of 3.5 and a neck depth of 3.5 so I'm just going to connect the two points like this in form of a semicircle after that I'm going to mark half an inch on the shoulder line for the shoulder slope and I'm going to connect that point to the neck width like so so after marking all of that the next measurement I'm going to mark is my bust measurement my bust measurement is 34 inches divided by 4 is 8.5 so I marked that on the bust line and after that I added 1 inch for seam allowance okay and after doing that I just curved out the armhole curved like so okay so moving on I'm going to go ahead and mark the full length of this blouse so I want this blouse to be 17 inches but I'm marking 17.5 because I'm going to use half an inch to hem the lower part. So this totally depends on you. You can use 18 inches, 19 inches, 20 inches, depending on how long you want your blouse to be. So I just use 17 inches and I'm marking 17.5. What I'm doing is I'm rotating my measuring tape on the shoulder line and then I'm marking points and I'm going to connect the points I made like so with my chalk. So this is what you should have for yours. After that, I'm going to sort of connect from the armhole measurement in a slant form to the edge of the fabric. So after marking everything, I'm going to go ahead and mark one inch for the back neckline. You can decide to do the same back neck width for, I mean depth for your back as well as the same you had for your front. But I just wanted my back to be higher than the front so I did one inch for the back and after that I cut out my pattern so I'm going to go ahead now and remove the back panel so that I can cut out the front neckline so I'm going to fold it back the way it was and then I'm going to cut out the neckline like so so after cutting it out this is what I have for the front of the dress I mean the blouse so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to cut out a facing to turn out the neckline so what I did was to place my the neckline of my blouse on a fresh um, fabric and I'm going to go ahead and trace out the neckline on the fresh fabric that I placed it on like this so I'm going to mark the shoulder and then I'm going to mark four inches downwards on the center side and then on the side I'm going to mark three inches I'll mark three inches as a, again on the other side I'll also mark three inches mark three inches again and then I'm going to connect my points
So after connecting my points, I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. So I marked three inches on the sides and four inches on the center side. So this is what I have. I'm going to go ahead and fold this on the lower part, which is why I added extra for this. So I cut for both the front and the back panel of the blouse. So after stitching the lower part of the facing, this is what I have for the front and the back panels. So what I'm going to do is to bring back the blouse and then I'm going to place it on the table right sides up and I'm going to place the facing on the neckline facing the right side of the facing on the right side of the blouse. So I'm going to align it on the neckline and I'm going to stitch it together with a straight stitch and then I'll notch and then put it on the inner side. So I did the same to the back panel, placed it on it, stitched it. I'm going to stitch it as well and then I'll take it to, I'll notch it and then flip the facing to the wrong side. So after doing that, this is what I have. You see, this is the front panel of the blouse. See the neckline already turned and looking very clean. So what I did was to also give it a good press. So from the inner side, this is what I have for the blouse. You see the facing looking neat, both from the inside. So you see the top stitch I did on the neckline after notching and after stitching the first stitch. So you see that's why it's lying very flat and nice and looks so beautiful. So I did the same to the back panel as well. As you can see, this is the back panel. So what I'm going to do next is to put both the back panel and the front panel together. So I, lay, I align both of them right sides facing each other. And then I'm going to grab the shoulder side and align the seams I have on the shoulder. And then I'm going to stitch facing to facing and the, the main shoulder fabric to the fabric like this. So I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and make a stitch like this. And on the other shoulder, I'm going to do the same thing, stitch the facing to the facing and the main fabric for to the main fabric. Okay, so after doing that, I'm going to go ahead and stitch the sides with one inch seam allowance we added. So I'm going to do that now and show you. So after stitching it, this is what I have. The shoulder has been attached together and the side seams have been closed. So what I'm going to do next is to go ahead and fold the, I mean hem the lower part. So you can go ahead and just fold your fabric like so and stitch. But I'm going to use the same fabric to make an inter, I mean to make um, bias tape for myself and I'm going to use it to turn it inside out for the lower part. And for the armhole, I'm going to use the bias tape to finish up the armhole. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and show you what I have for mine, okay? So after hemming the lower part, this is what I have. You see, like I said, I use the same fabric to make a bias tape for myself, which is what I use to turn the lower part in. But you can just go ahead and fold yours. It's the same thing, okay? So I did that for mine and this is what I have for the hem of my blouse. It's looking very beautiful and clean. So for the armhole, I used the bias tape, like I said, to turn it in. And this is what I have. It looks very clean and beautiful as well. So this is the finished look of the, of the blouse. If you enjoyed watching this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Until I see you again in my next video. Bye.